Why are you in a robot costume? Robots are cool. I thought we agreed no more robot costumes. Does not compute. You know what? We were going to do a playlist all about hairbrushes from the 18th century, but since you're in a robot costume, let's do a playlist all about robots. Okay. You can take that off now. So what is it about robots that makes them so cool? I don't know. Everything? Yeah, robots are awesome. They're a huge part of our culture. They show up all the time in sci-fi films and novels, and as technology advances, real-life robots are becoming more and more common in our society. But aside from their usefulness, what is it about robots that makes them so fascinating? I mean, even the word robot is kind of cool. Yeah, robot. absolutely. It's really simple. Two O's in it. It's very, it's just nice. It's yeah. a nice word. It comes from robota, a Czech Slavic word. It meant that a work that a medieval peasant was obliged to do for his medieval lord without any payment. This is Dr. Minsu Kang. He's an associate professor of European history at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. He's also an author and published a book a few years ago called The Sublime Dreams of Living Machines, which is about the rich history of robots, or should I say automata. Okay, so Kong researches robots or automatons. He's some kind of robot historian? That's a bingo, Matt. But aren't robots like a recent invention? Shouldn't their history be now? That's where you're astoundingly wrong. Robots have been around for thousands of years. At least the idea of robots have been around since ancient times. You know Daedalus? Yeah, I used to work with him. No, you didn't. In Greek mythology, he built wings for himself and his son Icarus. Oh yeah, uh, flew too close to the sun, wings melted, died. Yeah, Icarus died. Daedalus survived. It was very tragic. I mean, he never existed technically because of his mythology. In Greek mythology, Daedalus was known as a master craftsman who created lifelike statues that could move and speak on their own. Sounds like a robot. And also in Homer's Iliad, there's references to the god Hephaestus. The god of metallurgy and fire. Yeah, he was like a super blacksmith. Who has these uh, walking tripods um, and these maidens of gold who would help him, uh, you know, do his work and so on. Okay, that's cool, Craig, but those robots aren't real, those are just myths. Were there any actual robots made a long time ago? Yep. There's lots of accounts in early literature about automata in ancient Greece and China. One of the oldest surviving automata is something called the Antikythera Mechanism, which is actually the earliest known analog computer. It was used by the ancient Greeks to calculate the positions of various astronomical objects. Automata really became popular, though, during the European Renaissance. Leonardo da Vinci designed and possibly built several automata. Later, in 18th century Europe, notable watchmakers would make automata to show off their scales. And then, of course, there was the legendary artist and inventor Jacques de Vaucanso. Who? You don't know who Jacques de Vaucanso is? He was the mm. greatest genius of his time. No. Yeah, no, he was. No. Yes, he was. Who is Jacques de Vaucanso? And it turned out that he was also a French mechanic who, during the 1730s, invented three automata, one of which was a drum player, another one was a flute player, and it wasn't like a, a statue with a flute with a musical device inside it. It actually emitted wind out of its mouth, and it played an actual a flute, right, with its move, moving fingers. Um, and then the most famous automaton of them all, uh, the defecating duck. What? Greatest genius of his time. It was a duck, uh, and it could move around, flap its wings, you could put food in its mouth, and a couple of minutes later, stuff came out at the other end. <laughs> right? Uh, now, Vokas- Probably the least useful. But what, what just completely got me was that these were a huge success. People of Paris could not get enough of them. They stood in lines around the building to, uh, to get a glimpse of it, and not only was it a popular success, all the intellectual at, at, uh, intellectuals at the time just loved it. And now he's virtually forgotten, but um, it was a huge mystery to me about, you know, what was it about Vaucanson's automata that really captured the imagination of French people in the 18th century? They were living in an age where they were trying to look at everything as a machine. So there was the age when everybody was saying, the universe is a machine that God created, and God is an engineer. He put all these things together and he wound it up, and now it's going by itself. Political philosophers were talking about how the government is a machine, and the king, like, the, like God, is like the engineer, uh, engineer of this thing. If he's, if he's a good king, he knows how the machine works, he knows how to fix it, he knows how to uh, work, uh, run it well. There was also a revolution in medical science. Uh, where uh, doctors were really trying to make medicine into a real science and trying to get rid of all the superstitious uh, you know, uh, ideas about the body that existed before. And what they did was they said, the human body is a machine, right? This here, here is a pump. And these are wheels and these are gears. 
And that's how we, we have to think of it. In an age when uh, people are living in a machine universe, under a machine government, and all the citizens were machine people, these automatons came and it was like a perfect symbol of everything that they believed in at the time, right? And so they beheld it and said, yes, that's what the world is like. Right? Yeah. Like a pooping duck. Right, Craig? But then the Industrial Revolution happens, and it's like machines are not fun anymore. They're, they're dirty, and they're everywhere, and uh, all these workers seem to be just like enslaved to it, and so on. So uh, in the, in the mid-19th century uh, onwards, you get a lot of like fear of, uh, you know, mechanization and, you know, um, automata and so on. At every turn, um, Western civilizations have loved and had been terrified by the idea of uh, human machine. I think all things that seem to um, traverse the boundary between inanimate and animate are inherently interesting to human beings, right? Because that seems to both violate uh, the laws of nature, but at the same time in a fun way. <laughs> and I love the reaction uh, you know, that you get even today where on the one hand people are like, oh robots, cool, that's so fun and interesting. And the next moment it's like, oh robots, they're gonna kill us all. <laughs> I also see it as part of an unending search for humankind to understand what we are, right? I mean, and, and one of the questions that I deal with in my book um, in, in great detail is the lingering question of, are we machines? Are we like machines? Uh, and that argument, you know, goes back and forth uh, even today. And uh, it is uh, reflected in the way in which we uh, commonly use mechanical language to talk about human beings. Like, for instance, um, when I, if I said, you're a machine, that's usually a compliment. You're really efficient at what you do. Uh, you're really good at what you do. I've heard like Michael Jordan been, being called as a dunking machine. But at the same time, if I call you an automaton or a robot, that's usually a derogatory thing. Now think about that. I mean, some of the uh, you know, greatest compliment that I could give you is to call you a machine. But at the same time, one of the biggest insults that I could do is to call you a kind of a machine. Right? So what is it, Craig? Hello. Are robots good, bad, or just pooping ducks? Am I supposed to love or hate them? Are machines gonna take over and destroy us? Or are we already machines? Oh, the costume's back on. How'd you do that? So, in the rest of this playlist, we're gonna take a look at the robots of today and peer into the future to find out what these robots are all about. Stay tuned. Tuned? Or just keep clicking refresh on your subscription feed on YouTube. Thank you for watching. If you liked video, please click on like. If you would like to subscribe to channel, click on the subscribe button. If you would like to support the show financially, please visit our Patreon page. Next up, Craig Human goes to Carnegie Mellon Institution and checks out their robots. Did you do the robot dance?